A new command I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. These are the words that Jesus spoke to his disciples on a Thursday long ago, and we commemorate that event every year as Maundy Thursday. Maybe you've wondered how in the world this day came to be called Monday Thursday. Well, the word Monday is short for the Latin word mandatum, which means command or mandate. On this day, we remember Jesus, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, assuming the role of a young female servant, washing the feet of the host's house guests. Jesus, the host of the Passover, astonished his disciples in this demonstration of what he wanted them to remember and to do. That night in the upper room has particular significance for ordained deacons in the United Methodist Church. You see, the symbol for the United Methodist Order of Deacons is the bowl and pitcher, and the stole worn by deacons across the shoulder symbolizes the towel Jesus wrapped around himself in order to dry his disciples' feet. The bowl, pitcher, and stole, uh, or towel rather, remind deacons that ours is a ministry of word and service. Last February, along with Pastor Drew, Pastor Carrie and I were together in Jerusalem. We had the awesome experience of visiting the site believed to be where the original upper room was located in Jerusalem. We had our picture taken there in that space with all our fellow deacons who were traveling with us on that momentous trip. We appreciated the significance of being there and imagining Jesus at the table with his friends and astonishing them with everything he did that night. Jesus, God incarnate, God in the flesh, omniscient, omnipotent, creator of all that ever was, is, or ever will be, was demonstrating what leaders who would be Jesus' disciples were to do. Jesus came to earth not to be served, you see, but to serve. Serving others, loving others, caring for others is Jesus' mandate to us. Jesus sure knows how to make a point. To put what Jesus did into context, imagine visiting the White House or Windsor Castle where you are seated at the dinner table with the president or the queen of England. Suddenly, the president or queen gets up from the table, takes off their outer garment, dons a towel, brings out a bowl and a pitcher of water, and kneels down before you to wash your feet. Shocking. And these are earthly sovereigns, mere mortals, hardly the immortal king of kings, and we would be incredulous at such a gesture from them. Jesus was indeed making a very important point. On this eve of the impend his impending arrest, his incarceration, torture, humiliation, and death, and he knew what was coming. Yet Jesus' mind was not on those things. No, not on himself, but on making this point, issuing this mandate of love for the disciples at the Passover table. And that mandate was for them at that time and for you and me today. Of course, we know Jesus went on to continue to astound, continuing to astound the disciples that evening by changing the familiar liturgy of the Passover meal to a new meaning, a new covenant in his blood that we celebrate today as Holy Communion. What a week that was. Hosanna's ringing through the street earlier in the week to this astonishing evening with Jesus on Thursday. And then the week will end with Jesus's crucifixion, burial, and subsequent resurrection from the dead. And yet, on that momentous, in that momentous evening, it is good for us to remember what Jesus had in mind. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. Easy to do, right?
Now remember, those disciples were rivals for Jesus' favor. Who would sit on his left? Who would sit on his right? Quarreling with each other like children. Just as I have loved you, Jesus said. That's decidedly not easy. But it's our challenge and our mandate. So get out there and love one another as Jesus loves you. No strings attached. And here's another surprise. Jesus can help you do just that. Have a happy Monday, Thursday, friends.